630 Chad presents The Announcers. Opinion, personality, passion. The Announcers on 630 Chad, Edmonton's breaking news and conversation station. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of The Announcers. I'm Ryan Jesperson, joined by my two best friends in the entire world, Jalen Nye and Andrew Gross. Is that true? No. Okay. Fair. We are friends, though. Yeah. We're just not best friends. No, 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 no. Here's a question for you. Yes. Uh, again, total out of the By gate, the way, welcome totally back. Oh, well, It got out of hand last week back. without Yeah, you. you know what? I'm glad I wasn't here for the sex robot top. Yeah. Although I kind of wanted to be here I after could, listening Do you know that it? there wasn't one angry phone call? No. no. As far as I know. No, I actually received some I'm, positive feedback I'm from totally, it. I did as well. Yeah. People thought it was great. Mm-hmm. They especially liked uh, us comparing the sex robot to the car wash that's <laughs> counting down and you got to get another token in there <laughs> so you don't get left sort of like mid-process. <laughs> that's <laughs> Though, Look right? at this! What we just did, Jalen. Now, now you're back into the sex robot. Yeah. There's the, auto, the automatic type and the uh, self serve. <laughs> I'm still, still talking car washes. Just when we thought that we had covered it <laughs> all, we find out there's more to talk about. Totally Welcome back, Jalen. Thank you. The best friend comment. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna throw this one out here because uh, that just made me think of something. Do you consider your spouse your best friend? Oh, why are you asking? And, me and this? no, I'm, I'm asking you this because Coach and I, we. We kind of roll our eyes when we see people, oh, it's my soulmate and my best friend. I'm like, really? Yeah. Really? Like, we think it's kind of... Do you know I have a whole bit about this in my act? Do, do you? Oh, do you? I, I do. Hey, I'm Andrew, can you be funny on the radio, please? I cannot. Um, but <laughs> Let's I'm, hear it. But, uh, no. <laughs> I, I I don't get you necessarily up. consider my husband my my best friend. I love him dearly, but is best your, friends are different. Is he your soulmate, Jalen? Yeah, and I? I don't like that word either. Really? No. What I tweeted one time. Well, I tweeted one time, and I still quite agree with it uh, that I'm not looking for someone who wants to be my soulmate. I'm looking for somebody who's prepared to be my cellmate. And I <laughs> exactly. And I found that person. And coach, and I found that person too. Mm-hmm. Right? Actually, it's been pretty darn close a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I. I um, well, I mean, I don't. Want, you know, I mean, of course. You know, I love my wife like crazy, mm-hmm. uh, but like best friend, um, like I, you know, I'm, I'm closer to her than anyone else. Yes. But no, I like I, yeah, I get the whole thing. Like, and, and it's always in wedding vows and things like that. And you're my best friend and whatever. But, but like I, I, first of all, the whole best friend thing, it's always annoying me when people are like, Shay and Shay and Shay are like my best friends. <laughs> it's like It's like no, yeah. I want to hear you say which one's your best. <laughs> you know, I like best man, maid of honor. I like that uh you know, this is a, a, a one liner that's always easy as a wedding MC. You say the, the the real problem, the real issue with being best man is you never actually get a chance to prove it. Which people <laughs> like. That's uh, funny. But the whole best friend thing. I mean, I have two best friends. Mm-hmm. And uh yeah, and and they're my best pals. One of them lives in Edmonton, one of them lives in Calgary. I love them both like brothers, literally. Um and, and I'm and I'm very close to them. I tell them things I wouldn't tell my wife. Mm-hmm. I tell my wife things right. I wouldn't yeah. tell them. And yeah. you know what? That's good governance right there. Now that's <laughs> that's the reason you can't it would be like the chairman of the board also serving as the president of the company. Uh, There's no checks and balances there. So I think that your wife should be whichever one you'd like to make her, or your spouse, uh, your husband, mm-hmm. it, either chairman of the board or president of your love company. But they can't be both, <laughs> because you company. need to be able to go to the other in times when you're not, not getting along with the first. Mm-hmm. So that's good governance in a relationship. Are you does, my best friend? Does Am best friend one? have to be... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I, I guess it's kind of a, a dumb question, but in the context of you two, of Jalen and Andrew, mm-hmm. does best friend automatically have to be the same gender? Oh, no. No. Could you be married to Coach and have a male best friend? Absolutely. Really? Yep. You think he, Coach would be cool with that? Absolutely. Wow. Yep. Do oh, you yeah. have a male best sure. friend? Uh, probably my closest male friend would be would be Andrew. Mm-hmm. And is that relatively recent? In, I mean, is that since you started working yeah. together? Well, we were friends before, but I think the relationship yeah. has blossomed, yeah. given we spend so much time together. It's actually a, a really good situation between Jay and I, because we were friends already. At the very least, we were acquaintances. But, we, uh, you know, I'd say we were acquaintances who were friendly. Once working together, you spend all that time together, not only, you know, during the show, but before, after, over the weekend, in evenings, when you're planning tomorrow's show. And whenever you work with somebody closely... I mean, that friendship is bound to develop. Either a friendship or a complete hatred. So in our case, yeah. it was friendship, right? And but there's I, a lot of things that you share, yeah, right? Of that's, course. That's, you know, under that, that you, cone you, of silence. You get so used to just talking yeah. all day that there are no secrets. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, the reason I say it's a perfect, uh, it's you know just the perfect alignment of the moons is that we were already friends and we were both already in solid relationships. Mm-hmm. So there's no concern along those so lines. So when yours and Carol's relationship at the dating stage became serious, like mm-hmm. when you were like, I, I love this woman and yeah. then I'm going to ask her to marry me and all that type of thing. Did you leave significant, like like strong friendships with women behind? Yeah, I did an inventory as is best <laughs> yeah. recommended. I did I see, an inventory. I think you yeah. have to in a way. And I'm not saying you don't talk to the people anymore or anything like that, but but in my experience anyway, uh, the relationships, the fr- some of the friendships, they have to change. Often the one that has to change most quickly is the ex who you're still friends with. Yes. Mm -hmm. That can cause a lot of trouble in a relationship. You know, my first marriage, this is interesting. You guys are probably go, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. My first marriage, um, I had a a guy stand up for me and a couple of girlfriends and my uh, husband, the guy that I married at that time, (laughs) that sounds weird, um, had a girl stand up for him and a couple of guy friends. That girl who stood up for him, they had been in a long-term relationship at one point. Mm. I wouldn't have allowed it. Yeah, That's like every, everyone. Yeah, like see, I'm not. Uh, uh. I you combine long term relationship with long term memory, which all women have, and that's a recipe <laughs> for disaster, right there. Yeah, at at the time, I guess it didn't it didn't really bother me uh, as as time went pa- by, and I learned probably a little bit more about the relationship mm. more than I cared to know. I was like, are you are you joking me? Oh, I'm shocked that but, it turned um, out that way. Really, but at that time, I was like, yeah, that's fine. I'm having Murray stand up for me. You can have her stand up for you. But yeah, at the end of it, I was like, Oof. yeah, yeah. Better to sever those ties. Yeah, advance. I have friends that they vacation uh, with with exes, like really? exes in new relationships. They vacation together. Wait uh, a I second. Just, you need to define that more clearly for so me. So like, so like, person A is yes. in a relationship with person B. Yes. Then they break up. Okay. Person A is now with person C. Yes. Person B is with person D. And A B C D vacation oh, big together. Mistake. Whoa, big mistake! <laughs> you know <laughs> that's a rookie move, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but it works for them. Oh, it worked but, for but them. Some of the one of the problems with with that though is that sometimes or oftentimes you start having conversation. Oh well, remember when we were a couple and this, and so you're kind of you constantly keep going back into that. And that oh. or that or you return to that comfort zone. So. Yeah. You know, you have a fight now or a disagreement with your current partner, and because you have that intimacy with your previous partner, you go to them, and and it's nothing more will form of it than Mm -hmm. this. But you go because they know you, and you don't have to set it all up and explain where you're coming from or anything. So you just throw it down, and we're having a little fight about this, right? Well, when that fight is resolved, the other partner will be some miffed to find out that you share personal data with somebody who yes. shared much more than yes. that with you in the past. Yeah. I just, you know, you keep living in the past like that. My, my mom and dad do that. Like my, my mom and dad have been divorced now for, well, since I was 18 years old. So it's been a long time. Five my, years now. Yeah. That's, oh, you're a good man. Um, and so my stepmom has been married to my dad longer than my, my, my mom and dad were. We all hang out together. That's fine. It's, it's taken a long time, but it's good. And I think it's good for everyone. But at times, I find it gets very awkward because my mom or my dad will like, hey, do you remember that time we were mm. and in front of their current wives and husbands or wife and husband? And I just think, I think that's a little, I don't mind it once in a while, but I think all the time, I think it's disrespectful to the other partner. But this is also only in our perception or our estimation, yeah. right? I mean, people are listening to us right now or watching this on the 630 Ched YouTube channel plug and uh, and going, whoa, are these, you know, I mean, I'm sure some people probably think that as I'm saying no way to all these ideas, they're going, oh, he's insecure in his relationship, no. right? Dynamite, uh, you know, dynamite is dangerous. It doesn't matter if you're holding onto it and not igniting it yet. I mean, to say, well, I've, I've held a stick of dynamite for almost five years now. It certainly never got off. Well, one day somebody will put a match to that. <laughs> is, so is it okay to remain... Um, close and have a relationship with your exes uh, i i'd say no honestly it's not worth the risk yeah i mean i uh i mean i, I just don't know if i want to get into story time I, <laughs> <laughs> tell us a story uncle ryan. Come on, uncle ryan way back when i was a single man uh I'd, I'd been in a relationship and for a high school relationship it was quite serious and uh, i mean you know take that for what it's worth anyway it ended kind of ugly uh, but unresolved. It ended the night before I went to Europe for a year. Mm. 
Okay. Mm. So then, and there was no email, by the way, and there was no social media. So it was all handwritten letters after that. Can we take a moment with that? Did she drop you off at the airport and you went, oh, by the way, this is done? No. Oh, no, that would have been she, good. No, I was packing the night before I left because I was super busy and she was at a house party and I decided I was done packing early. So I'd go surprise her and I walked in on her with another guy. Ooh. Oh. And then went to the That's airport bad. in the morning and traveled to London and started my college. They could have just been friends. <laughs> They were wrestling. <laughs> uh, there you go. And uh, anyway, I'm, I'm over it, obviously. Or am no, I? Apparently not. Uh, <laughs> but so, so I shouldn't even be telling this. Like, no, no, I, I think you should. Well, she It'll might It'll make you feel better. Um, yeah, she's great. And she, she has a family now and everything. That's fine. She invited me to her wedding. Mm. And uh, there hadn't been a whole lot of contact between us. And I don't know. Uh, eh. Like, so I decided to go. Wow, okay. But I also decided to bring one of my colleagues that worked behind the bar with me at Earl's as my guest. And, you know, so <laughs> you know you know what I'm getting at, right? No, I don't. Where is this going? Well, you know, like you don't bring the ugliest person you know. Earl's uh, girl. Earl's girl. I see. Okay. So anyway, just to, like not to make a statement, but to kind of make a statement. Why am I telling this story? Anyway, so... We walk into the wedding and and it's just, yeah you're loving this and uh, and and so like during the vows, not a word of a lie, X is like up there and like keeps like looking over and I can tell that she's like trying to figure out who this chick is beside me. So you think and on her wedding day, at the at the forefront of her thinking in the was, vows during yeah, the vows was who is that with Ryan? That's and I'm not that's really? not what I think. Oh, you're, you're going to say so, you know. I, I would go so far as to say that is fact. Wow. Because people were coming up to me at the reception going, what the was that? So Really? Yes. Huh. So very interesting and awkward circumstance for what probably amounted to 12 to 15 seconds, but felt like an eternity for mm-hmm. me. I was kind of getting a kick out of it, but mostly not. Did anyone end up in the cloak room with the bride? Hopefully her groom. Okay. <laughs> no All one right. else. All right. I wouldn't be telling the story if they sure, had that I guess, far. Yeah. Um, and, and and anyway, and long story short, it it kind of ended up becoming a bizarre evening and night. And we left the reception early, and and I never spoke with her again. That was it. That was hmm. it. And I actually felt, to be honest, and I didn't act out in any way. I wasn't a jerk in any way. I didn't say anything. I didn't, you know. Was my, she waiting my, for my you date to was save dressed her? appropriately. I don't know. But you say, it, I don't know, like it, that's a possible it, well, it explanation. Just, it just reiterated that we weren't designed to remain in touch because there was uh, there was there was or are obviously some unresolved issues. Yeah. And this hmm. now, to be clear, the wedding was was I mean, it was in 1990 some. So, I mean, this is like a long time ago, but yeah, still on your mind, though. Eh? Well, I mean, if, oh, I'm, no, if I we're talking about yeah, no, no, if we're sure, talking yeah. in the context of like yeah, can exes know. be friends like and I guess my answer is that's the only experience that I've had where there was that crossover, because typically speaking, I've always tried to have amicable breakups wherever possible, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I can't think of a relationship that I've maintained as a friendship that has been a romantic relationship previous to that. I, I don't think there's one in my life. I think you... I, I don't have one. We've broken up and moved on. I, I've married one, lived with two others. Well, I've married two. Sorry, I've got one right now. Uh, I have a previous <laughs> ex-wife. I have two women that I lived with. We are... Uh, the only one I'm in touch with is my current wife. Uh, although my ex-wife I see from time to time because now we're getting to the point where the children are getting married. So we have to be in the same... Huh. Hall at one time or another, and and it's funny, it's funny. I mean, the, at the end of the last wedding I was at, my son's, uh, my ex-wife came up and said, and now I don't know why I'm telling this story, but she came up and I hadn't spoken to her all evening except to I gave her a hug after they got married, said congratulations. Uh, at the end of the evening, she came up, sort of half in the bag, and said, um, "I know you hate me, but this is a great night." And I said, "I don't hate you. I don't care enough about you to hate you." <laughs> And I, I felt a certain amount of resolution there. A little, oh. little bit more closure. That's an amazing line. <laughs> that I is remember amazing, that. Write that one down. Yeah, that is an amazing line. <laughs> Maybe but, it's a male-female thing. Possibly. Do you think? Well, I, I'm, I'm still friends with exes. Hmm. Can I say something outrageous? Yes. Mm-hmm. If a male ex of yours is still friends with you, a big part of that is because he still wants to sleep with you. Do you disagree? I do not. Really? Yes. Huh. Almost probably. And I don't know the inside. I don't know. 
But I would say as a broad generalization, almost 100% of the time. Yeah, you boys are... It's true. Mm. Yeah. Well, I don't see a big denial on your part. No, why, why, I'm not going to argue. I'm not no, gonna no, why would you? Yeah. I, I'm a girl. I'm not going to argue. Look at me. What are you no, going to do? You're, eh? you're, you're guys. I'm a girl. Like, yeah. We've remained the one uh, that I'm talking about in, in particular. We dated on and off for the better part of probably eight years. Right. And we're still friends. And um, my parents still see him once in a while. And in Thunder Bay, or if I was home, he'd come over sure. to the place. And- Jay, let me just throw this out here, and and I'm possibly just wrong, and, and that it's it's almost it should be rhetorical. To every guy listening, if I say, "What do you remember about your ex?" What's the first thing that comes to mind? Is it, oh, she was always so friendly in the morning, <laughs> or she had a great sense of humor, <laughs> or is it possibly something else? Yeah. The first you name any girl that somebody's a guy's been in a relationship with any woman over the years, hey, do you know this girl? What, what you know? For, you know what the first thing is, right? You know what the one thing is. Possibly. Retirement savings. Yeah, that's right. You're yeah. talking sexy time. I am, yeah. and and what you might have missed, what you might have missed mm. about that relationship. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, we're speaking in generalities. Sure. Why do women, generally speaking, in your perception or understanding? want to maintain friendships with exes. Is it clinging to the hope Mm -hmm. that one day that relationship will achieve its previous or prior glory? No. 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 Your whole face is twisted. Yeah, right you now. didn't really give that a lot of thought. That was a quick denial. No, I mean, there, there's reasons why they're exes. In, in my case, there's reasons why there are exes. So then why is he still a buddy? Because he's a nice he's a nice man. There's lots of nice men out there. Yeah, You're not friends nice with them man. all. He's, no, no, but this one was a nice man who had a big part of my life for a long time, and, and I like him. So then why do, why do so many people go back one more time? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, you could probably say that me and, and this guy went back like 10 more times like, over those eight years, right? There hmm. was. This is interesting. On Friday, so just yesterday, I had a retired judge in my studio, in our studio on my show. And, and he, w- the reason that I was talking to David Orr is because he's written a new book mm. on Louis Riel. And okay, it's yeah. really neat, really interesting subject matter. Uh, and, and he was sort of, you know, talking about that off the air. I said, well, you were, you were a Saskatchewan provincial court judge. So what brought you to Edmonton? How'd you wind up in Edmonton? He says, well, I got back together with my ex-wife. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he says, and so I came back to Edmonton and now we're, you know, we're married again and everything's great. And I, and I just thought, wow. Like, how often do you hear that when people that have gone through a divorce and and obviously established life after that marriage and the failure, if you want to call it that, of that marriage or the marriage not working out, and then have gone back and remarried their ex? Yeah, particularly uh, unusual for a judge. Isn't their job to weigh up the pros and cons <laughs> of a situation? <laughs> He's probably listening right now. Yeah. You, Did SOB. you make a bad call on that originally? <laughs> <laughs> Was it appealed? I mean, how do you? No, I wouldn't. I, would I always never find do it that. interesting to see, like, and in, in this uh, a friend of mine uh, went through a divorce recently and remarried within a couple of years. And uh, I, I always, I always find that to be. I mean, obviously, every circumstance is different. But there are also those that would say, I'm only getting married once in my life. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I know both of you have seen second marriages, but but people will say, if if, if, the, if this one doesn't work out, I'll, I'll be in another relationship, so I'm never getting married again. Why did you both have the, the faith, the confidence in the institution to go at it again? Because I, you, I need somebody in my life, and I wanted somebody that I could count on. And with my current wife... She would not agree to live with me. Uh-huh. Um, those were her terms and conditions that for that to happen, we'd have to be married. And I really didn't have a problem with that. Actually, I kind of admired it. I, I had lived with other women, one of which I ended up married to, as I mentioned, and, and two others that broke up. And that was just a different demand. Just, no, I'm not doing that. It would mm-hmm. be disrespectful to my parents. And so I, yeah, okay. It it wasn't, although I'm going to be a hypocrite now saying this is what men focus on, this sexy time thing. It it wasn't that. It was she held herself and conducted herself with respect, and mm-hmm. she was different than anyone else I'd ever been with. And I thought, I'm not going to take the chance of losing this one. Yeah. 25 years Yeah, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to get married again, um, but the man proved otherwise. Hmm. Yeah, coach proved otherwise. So it was the fact that you found the guy and you were well, like... he found me. Yeah, you've told the story before he, the uh, restaurant, he, right? He found me and it was 
you know, going through all of that and, and going back into the, the single dating thing at 36 and trying the online dating, all it was just like a pound my head against the wall. It's awful. It is absolutely awful. That's really interesting to hear, too, because you yeah. know a lot of people that found their partner pre Plenty of Fish and mm-hmm. eHarmony and Tinder mm-hmm. and everything else uh, lament the fact that they never got to explore those waters. That was, yeah, that wasn't a fun experience. But And dating again at that age or at that time, it was just, I, I didn't enjoy it uh, at all. And then Oh, I it, did. It was, well, yeah, no. <laughs> I was just starting to be an entertainer. I was in a different town every night. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. No, I I would go to bed at night, and I don't know, it wasn't a prayer, and I don't know who I was praying to, but I would just say, I, I, I never sat there and said, oh, please bring me someone, or, you know, anything like that. All I ever said was that wherever he is, whoever he is, keep him safe until he's ready to find me. And please make sure that when that happens, he is ready for it. Is it dusty in here? Because I've got a little tear. That was just what I would say to myself. You put it out to the universe. I put it out Hmm. to the universe. I don't know if I manifested it, whatever it was. And then when it happened, which was a total random, you know, uh, night, it happened. And, and, you know, that night we went on our date like two nights later and never looked back. Really? Carol and I had a conversation one week after meeting one another because I could see that she was special and this was going to go somewhere. And I said, I don't want any secrets between us. So here are the three conditions under which this relationship continues. I'm not getting married again. I will never live in Edmonton. And I'm not having more children. How'd that work out for you? Well, we compromised. (laughs) (laughs) You did. Uh, Yeah, well, it's the better part of uh, marriage. Compromise. But see, you've earned like some major points. I mean, you compromised on three huge things. On all of them, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, well, that's a do? positive, isn't yeah, absolutely. it? Absolutely. Mean, yeah. Doesn't track record matter? Well, I think it does. You'd have to ask my wife. I mean, we're still together after 25 years, and I don't know who would put up with me, frankly. And, and you know, funny, this is a, sort of an aside, but related. I honestly don't know who would put up with me. I, I can't think of anyone beyond Carol who would put up with me. And, and when I say that out loud... Carol agrees readily. Yes. Friends of ours agree readily, mm-hmm. as Jalen is shaking her head right now. But I've thrown it out there on more than one occasion that I don't know anyone that would put up with Carol for 25 years either, and it doesn't get the same kind of consensus in the room. She's a good woman, that woman. She is a good woman, but we're great together. And she is a handful. And I've said it, a, <laughs> she hates it when I say that, but she is a handful. And, and she sees it as an insult, but to me, that's actually the number one attraction. She, she's a handful. You don't want to take a misstep with that woman. <laughs> and you can't, you can't say that's not true, Jay, because you know her well. Mm-hmm. You do not want to go nose to nose with that woman. She scares me more than any other person on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you love her so that much. That is why just, I love just her. Just pure fear. And, and that's yeah. why there will never be another divorce. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. Terrifying. I don't know how that thing gets settled, but I have my suspicions. <laughs> yeah, I can think of it. There have been a couple instances we've been at, you know, dinner with friends or cocktail parties or whatever. And as as sort of a precursor to telling a story or whatever, I'll say, uh, now I acknowledge I'm not an easy guy to live with. And she always goes, true. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's just, it's like a knee jerk. Like, that's true. He's not easy. But again, that's, you know, it's never a dull moment. But I also think it's part of our personality as well, because yeah, coach yeah, yeah. would do the same thing. I said, we're just like. You knew what you were getting yep. into. Yeah, I suspect we're all alike in one way because of what we do for a living. I need somebody to keep me on the straight and narrow. I need somebody to keep my ego in check. But I also need somebody to pick me up and and when I've fallen. When somebody criticizes me mercilessly or when something doesn't go the way I had hoped it would go or if the little comments add up throughout the course of the week. She's not going to do it every night. She's not going to do it even every week. She's going to do it when it needs to be done. And she rebuilds my confidence often. And it's another huge component of of why I'm so... I don't want to say dependent because that seems like a bad word for it. But No, there's nothing wrong with that. People talk about crutches like it's a bad thing yeah, too. It's, it's, yeah. You can't have a crutch in life. I'm just looking forward to it. We're out of time here. I can't believe it. I'm looking forward to the, the weekly call-in uh, marital counseling session that you two are going to provide. <laughs> Based on your wisdom and experience, I've learned so much already on this. This is why you got to listen to the announcers every Saturday morning. Thanks for tuning in this week. We'll talk to you again soon.